takes your time off, so to speak. And we put all that together, got headed on the way. If I if I could if I had the time, if I took the time to share with you all the things that God did with us and through us and for us in nine days, we'd still be here sometime on Wednesday. <laughs> There wasn't a vacation at all the way we anticipated. I, I, I call to remembrance of, of the, the, the time in December when when I was when I was felt and compelled to, to want to spend 40 days with the Lord in the first 40 days of the year, I devoted to just, just trying to spend time with the Lord all the time. And, he, and a lot of things happened those 40 days, but not nothing happened those 40 days like happened in the nine days we were going. It was, it was I, I really was of the opinion that I had experienced God in a lot of ways, and I had, and I experienced God in a lot of different circumstances, and I had, but I had never experienced God the way I did in nine days. He was there. He was, it was all His purpose. It was all His plan. It was all Him showing us how big of God we serve. He's tremendous. He's, I've I got a, I, I, in, the, in the message that the Lord gave me for, Western Way Cowboy Church last Thursday, or a week ago Thursday, um, I, I used that that deal that Skip brought. My, this is my king. That's my king. Yeah. I read that, <clears throat> and after the service, a lady come up and and she wanted a copy of it. And I printed the one. I gave it to her. But I don't even, I don't even remember where I got this. Somebody handed me this. And I got a stack of them, and they said, I, "I thought you might enjoy this," and I stuck it in my Bible. Uh, the amazing thing I wanted to share with everybody, Westerway Cowboy Church has been meeting for for just over five years in a little little old Zion church in Altamont, Kansas. And it's about, if you cut from that window to here and to there, that's about how big the church is. And they got it packed full of pews as much as they can. And they had outgrown the building and it just got too small. They had more people than, than they could seat. They didn't have any, it doesn't have any facilities. They had a porta potty outside for a bit for a restroom. So they began to pray and began to ask the Lord, and the Lord made a, a way for them to, to build a new building. And that's when we went out there, they had moved into the new building that seats 250 people now. Mm -hmm. um, they had moved into the new building in March, and we, we did a dedication to, of, the, of the building to give to the Lord while we were there a week ago Saturday. At the Saturday event, there was standing room only. Wow. Wow. Pastor Les is standing up there and it's got a big stage and everybody's on the stage and they're playing music. <coughs> Pastor Les is standing there and the church is just busting at the seams. And he's just standing there and I'm sitting over here watching him. And I could just see the awe in his eyes. I could just see him standing there looking at this thinking, wow, Lord, we asked for a bigger building and you gave us a bigger building and it's just as full as the little one. <laughs> it was packed. But that's what God does. That's how big He is. We we can't over expect from Him. We can just do as He tells us to do and watch what He does in the blessing of this. But I want to read this to you. Like I said, in, in the midst of all that, somebody handed me these and I got a stack of them. And, and I don't know why they would have brought this. Of course, nobody had any idea of the message I was bringing, but they, they brought this. So I want to read this to you, and it says treasure at the top. And it says, I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of His. I won't, let, I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I am finished and done with low living, sight walking, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame visions, worldly taking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits, or popularity. I don't have to be right, first, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by faith, lean in His presence, walk by patience, <laughs> am uplifted by prayer and labor with power. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way rough, my companions are few, my guide is reliable, my mission is clear, I cannot be brought, I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the enemy, 
ponder the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up until I have stayed up, scored up, prayed up, paid up, preached up for the cause of Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, preach till all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problem recognizing me. Wow. That was good. My banner be made clear. I was, I, was just, I was just overwhelmed when I read that. I was like, wow. She had no idea I was bringing the thing about. And I read that and it blessed her and then she blessed me with that. But but that should be our that should be our demeanor. We should know how big our God is. If we're gonna serve God, if we're gonna if we're gonna call ourselves a Christian, if we're gonna claim Christ as our Savior, we should understand how big He is. And we should know how powerful He is, and we should have faith and trust in all that He is because of who He is. Again, our, our trip was just a journey of, of God revealing. I, I, can read, I can read Galatians 5 and 22 and all the fruits of the Spirit and say, yes, I have experienced that. I have experienced everything that He has, that He says that He has to offer, we experienced in nine days. I was, I was in tears when we left Dallas just because of all that God had done in eight days. I couldn't help but just weep. At the service at, uh, at Western Way Cowboy Church, There was a man there that had been coming to church there for a little while. His brother had recently been saved and baptized in that church. And, and uh, Richard had been coming for a while and Les had been working on him for a while. <coughs> and after service on Thursday night, we, we gave, I, we, I gave an altar call after the sermon. Greg and Susie and Oscar played music. They played the song. Susie said we played, they played the song through five times. I don't know how long we played the song. And I know the Lord kept telling me, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Finally, Pastor Les gets up and he stands with me and we're calling. People are coming up and asking for prayer. And, and the Lord keeps telling me, don't stop. So after a while, we finally just stopped. And I got up on the stage, come around this side and got up here on the stage. And then that man, Richard, walks up on the stage. He said, Pastor, you quit too soon. Yeah. He said, I was just handing my cap to my wife so I could come up Aww. when you stop. I said, Richard, it's never too late it's never too late to give your life to the Lord when He calls you out. Whatever the time is, however the time is, it's always someone that will pray with you. You can pray yourself. Ask God in your heart. Make that decision. Make that choice. He said, well, Pastor, he said, we prayed together. Oscar was right there. Oscar, and we joined together and we prayed and he, he received Jesus Christ and he was just excited. And he, he said, I have a problem though, Pastor. I said, what's that? He said, I have a problem asking for things for myself. I said, you're not asking for anything. You're receiving what's already yours. You didn't ask for anything. You just come up here to give what God wanted to give you. You didn't ask. He died on the cross that you would have it. You're just receiving it. So receive it with joy. Receive it with the knowing that, that it's already yours. It's already bought and paid for. You were bought and paid for with a price. That you'd have eternal life. That you would, that you would be able to experience all that God is. And all that God can do in your life. And, and as we learn to trust Him more, He does so much more in our life. And, and that was, that in, a, in a very short synopsis, that was our trip. It just never stopped. It never, God never stopped showing us who He was day after day after day after day. I've shared uh, many times about my daughter and my son in Texas, and I've had communication, and finally got communication with both of them. I've seen my daughter once, where I, and we texted my son about coming out there. And, and he said, well, text me when you get to town. So I texted him on Monday when we got to Dallas. He said, we're in town if you'd like to meet him. I haven't seen him in over 20 years, never seen the grandkids. Um, so I texted him on Monday. And, and, and Michaela, she's five. And, and, and Hayden, he's just over a year old. And uh, my son got married and got kids and everything. I haven't seen him, like I said, in way over 20 years. And so I texted him on Monday. He said, we're in town. We'll be in town tonight, tomorrow night, Wednesday, whatever. And never didn't hear back from him. So kept praying about it, got up Tuesday morning and said, okay, Lord, whatever it is that you have for us, whatever the reason, I'm, I'm not going to fret about it, and I'm not going to stop praying about it. So, Des and I got up, and we're making the bed, and my phone goes off, and Marcus says, meet us tonight at 8 o'clock at Primo's. Mm, Amen. We had a wonderful <laughs> visit, a great time together. The kids, everything, we're going back Christmas. I promised them we'd come back Christmas and spend a week with them, because we always come through kind of in a hurry. But I've been praying, I've been praying that prayer for 
six years, five years. A lot of things have happened, but, but God can heal anything. If he can heal that little boy, Quinn, mm -hmm. and he can hear, heal a 20-year-old relationship, and, and just and not, 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 a, not an awkward moment, not one awkward moment the entire time. <laughs> God completely restored it. When God fixes it, he doesn't, just, he doesn't just paint this corner and then paint the next corner. When God fixes something, He fixes it. And He does it all the way. He doesn't, he doesn't do it halfway. He shows us so many things in so many places, so many people that we met. We have no, we have no comprehension at all of how big God's church is. This is a great church. This, you, you, this is a great con congregation of people and a great loving bunch of people. And I know where there's two more now. Western Way Cowboy Church. The barn. The barn. That's another That's another blessing that we received. And I'm going to have to get off of this in a minute. Um, the barn is, is, a, is a ministry put together by two families that's called Blessing and Restoring Blessing and Restoring Neighbors, B-A-R-N, the barn. They built a big barn in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. It's an hour and 15 minutes from anywhere to get to the barn. It's out in the middle. I mean, you, you look at the map of Kansas and there's just nothing out there, and there's the barn. <laughs> and it's church, and it's a big church. It's a pretty big barn, about twice the size of this building. We went there last Sunday night. It was full. People from everywhere, they come... They drive over an hour to get there. We go an hour and 15 minutes to get there. Full of good, solid, loving, Christian people, God's people. <clears throat> They're all over. God is staring at us. It came to my mind, and I shared with them while we were there, that I remember when I was a kid, of people pulling their mind together to building a facility just like what they have with a, a big barn with a, with a platform on one end and a little kitchen on the other end, and they use it for selling alcohol and dancing. <laughs> and I said, what's amazing is the same efforts are now going in to do the same thing, but now we're using it to praise the Lord. Amen. And the scripture came to my mind that says, in the last days I will pour my spirit out on all mankind. People are taking, the, people are taking it serious. People are getting real about Jesus. People are getting real about God all over the place. God just took us to one little place out in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, and showed us how big He really is. Mm -hmm. And how he can reach down from heaven and he can stir a spirit and he can kindle something that, that's been there and he can make it happen in a tremendous way. Loving, godly people searching for their father. Susie found a little postcard that says, This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through and it's got one of them little bitty campers on it. You know, little, having a, the old days, a little teardrop looking one goes behind your car. Got a picture that I was in. I'm, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. That's all I need is that little camper to get me from here to there. Amen. But being Memorial Day and everything, we have a you know we have a lot of ways that we that have come over the years of how we remember things. We like to be able to reminisce. We like to be able to think back, and we like to have a recollection of things that have happened in our life. And I was thinking about that this, this last week as we. As we, we went out there and, and, and everybody said, well, take a lot of pictures. And we took the video camera. We videotaped uh, a good four hours of stuff that we did, uh, the sermons and everything that we did, we, we videotaped. And I was thinking, well, we, we, go, we go through this effort to make recordings of things so that we can look back at it and remember it. <laughs> Memorial Day is a day that was set aside to remember those that have, have made the ultimate sacrifice, that have given their life to to serve the, the, the country and to protect the freedoms that we have and protect the things that God has blessed us with because everything we have is a blessing from God. These people have gone out of their way to protect those and, and we, we remember those people and I was, I was, I was studying about Memorial Day and it, 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 kind of, it, it kind of stirred me because you know Memorial Day was for 102 years from, eight, from 1868 to 1970 it was always on the 30th of May. But then, you know, the 30th of May didn't always fall on a favorable day, so, so we made an adjustment. We were at my daughter's house and my grandson, we're sitting there and, and we're talking about having pictures and, you know, we used to have, we always had photo, photo albums and, and stuff like that. And now we take pictures with our smartphone. Remember the little brownie cameras? Yes, that you had to wind? Oh, yeah. You take one, you wind it, 
You send it off, and a month or two later, they send you back your picture. <laughs> and then they got real quick to where you get your pictures back in a few days, and then overnight, and then now you don't even develop pictures. My daughter was telling me that she got a phone call from the drugstore or from Walmart and said, your pictures are in. And she's like, my pictures are in? What are you talking about? She said, so she checked the, checked the information. Oh, yeah, it's, it was me. She said, I went and picked up my pictures, and they said they were a year old. Somehow they had gotten lost. She had forgotten completely about it. But but we were talking about it, and my grandson, Connor, says, no, you just delete the one. You know, he did, Now we take pictures on our smartphone or on one of them digital cameras, and you put it on a little memory card, or you put it on a flash drive, and you load it up, and you just delete the ones you don't want and all that. Remember, we never deleted any picture. If you had an envelope full of pictures, you kept them all, <laughs> even if you took three of the same thing. We didn't get rid of nothing. We kept all those pictures because we like to remember Remember the old red eye? Everybody's worried about having red eye. Yeah. You guys be around oh. call you. But, but all the things that we do to remember, and then I was thinking about Memorial Day, and I thought, wow, it was an established day to remember those who made a sacrifice. And then because it didn't really fit in with the weekend list structure, like we would like it to, it got adjusted, adjusted to fit into a weekend so that, so that everybody could have a Memorial Day weekend. And I thought, wow, the importance of the Memorial Day kind of diminished a little bit. What it represents kind of went away just so we could make sure we scooted it in and made our, 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 our three-day weekend. The remembrance diminishes as the importance of it diminishes with it. And I thought, wow, how amazing it is that as much as we want to remember things and as much effort as we make, as times change, our memories diminish a little bit and we're willing to, to just put it aside or it's not as important because we will remember the things. I don't, I don't need pictures to remember the things that were important in my life. I can remember the things. There's a, uh, some just very, very important things when we see, when we think about it. We don't, we don't really need a picture. I can remember it quite well. I can remember the very first sermon I ever preached. I can remember the church I was in. I can remember the pastor's name. All those things I can I can close my eyes and picture that church because it was important. I knew a guy uh, that when I worked at the at the gravel pit in Wilcox, Gary was his name, and he had a long hair. <laughs> but he was a he was a veteran, and he'd lost some very dear friends in his service. And on Veterans Day, on November the 11th, he didn't care what was going on. He took that day to remember his friends. The importance of that day never lost its importance. What he did on that day always was important, and he always remembered it. The things that are important, the things that are meaningful to us, we won't forget. They're there, but sometimes we they begin to diminish. They begin to water down as days go by. Go to First or Second Timothy chapter one. <laughs> Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 1. They're there. We know they're there. And then we kind of let them slack off a little bit. Or it's, the importance kind of got behind. Or it diminishes a little bit. Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1. I want to read 1 through 5. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved Son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from, from my forefathers with pure conscience and without ceasing. I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of the tears that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. Paul says, Timothy, I pray for you. I pray for you every day and every night that, that your faith and that your, your strength would be there because I know it's there. I'm calling you to remembrance of it. Don't, don't forget about your grandmother and your mother and their faith and what they brought you out. I know it's in you.